Hello, welcome back to Decaf Math, and welcome if you are new here. So today, let's play around with the idea of proving pi induction. And so for those of you who like lists, I will write down the three main steps needed here, and then we can apply the steps for a specific example. So, the first thing is we need to show that a base case is true. Base case, sometimes called the basis. The base case. So, usually that is when n equals 1. And you can sort of extend or extrapolate this um, and interpret it based on your question. So, uh, sometimes we use uh, proofs by induction for like graph theory problems. It's been a really long time. Um, but, you know, starting with the graph and then breaking it down to subgraphs. Um, but n equals 1 is usually our base case. And then our step two is to assume, assume whatever it is that we're trying to prove is true for n equals k, where k is sort of like a placeholder index. It doesn't really matter. It's just some value k. So we're just going to write that we assume that it's true for n equals k and Step three is to prove our statement is therefore true based on our assumption. Prove true for n equals k plus one. So like the next term or the next thing in our line of logic. So these two together, steps two and three, are usually called the inductive step. And then we have like our base case. So basically, we're saying we have this base case, we have this starting point, and we're gonna tr prove, assume it's true for n equals k, and based on that n equals k, we're gonna prove that next term. So just from this alone, we've basically shown that if we know n equals 1, whatever it is that we're proving is true for n equals 1, then it is pr true for n equals 1 plus 1 the next term, so n equals 2, but if it's true for n equals 2, then it's also true for n equals 3, and if it's true for n equals 3, then it's true for n equals 4, dot 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 dot. So that's the idea, and then we show that it's true for everything. So that's it. Um, and that's really a cool way of thinking about things, because um, if we were to just sit there, we can't prove every single situation where n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, you know, forever. <laughs> so this is our way of generalizing that idea. So it's also really important to make sure that we have all three of these steps. We absolutely need to have a base case um, because we need to know where to start. And we need to show that that first situation is true before we build off. Okay? Okay, so let's try this for proving 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 2n equals n times n plus 1 over 2. And this is actually called Gauss's formula because when the famous, famous mathematician Carl Friedrich Gauss was a young, young boy, um, I forget how old he was, but he was asked to add um, the numbers or the integers from 1 to 100. So when n equals 100, and, um, so just natural numbers, basically, right? The integers, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, um, 2n. And he found this trick where 
instead of just sitting there going 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 4, blah 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 blah, he thought to pair the numbers and notice that 1 plus 100 was 101, and then 2 plus 99 is 101, 3 plus 98 is 101, 4 plus 97, dot 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 dot, right? And he said, okay, so they all add up to 101, and I have 50 pairs, because 1 to 100, we have 100 numbers, so that would be 50 pairs, right? So, um, so then he says 50 pairs of 101, so 50 times 101. So from this, we can kind of see that the n plus 1 part is our 100 plus 1, that's 101, times 100 divided by 2, 100 divided by 2 is 50. So that's where he gets the 50 times 101, and that can be generalized for any n, this sort of pairing logic. But, uh, today, let's try to prove this using induction, instead of just going, ooh, all hand-wavy here. So, let's just follow our steps. So, step one, you probably want to note, you know, that you're doing a proof by induction. Not that we're writing like this super formal proof or anything right now, we're just trying to follow these steps. But our base case, one base case, is n equals 1. So we're going to try and show that this is true for n equals 1. So for n equals 1, um, it's just going to be 1 on this left side because we're adding numbers from 1 to 1, which is just 1. So, is that equal to, if n equals 1, 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2? So, this equals 1 times 2 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is indeed 1. So, we showed that this is true. Check. Alright. So make sure that if you're showing that something is true, put the question mark because you don't assume it's true and then say, oh, it's true. <laughs> you have to put the sort of logically anyway and say, is this equal to this? And then somehow make the two sides equal. Okay? So we showed that it's true for n equals 1. Good. Step 2, we assume true. Assume that it's true for n equals k. So assume that if n equals k, so assume that um, oops, assume that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 to k equals k times k plus 1 over 2. So that's just plugging in n equals k and, and just assuming. So that's it, just write for step two, just write your assumption. And then step three, based on that assumption, now we want to prove, prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus n equals k plus 1 is true. So we want to prove that this equals k plus 1 times, sorry, got cut off there, but um, k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 over 2. So I'm leaving parentheses here because I want to make it really, really clear that I'm doing up to n, where n is k plus 1. And so this is n equals k plus 1, and this is my n plus 1, and all over 2, right? So we have to prove that this is true. So does this equal this? So as long as we make these two sides equal, we're good. 
So prove true for n equals k plus 1. Assume true for n equals k. Okay. So for this side, I might as well simplify this. I have k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2 over 2. And I might as well FOIL that out, right? If you don't recognize this, this is just a little bit of algebra. First, outer, inner, last. So, k squared plus outer is 2k, inner is k, so that's 3k. Last is 2, all over 2. So, this side is this thing. And now we need to see if this side can somehow equal this. But we haven't really used our assumption yet, so that kind of gives us a hint that we're going to be. And it might be kind of tempting to look at this and say 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2k equals this thing. So I should just do k times k plus 1 over 2 and then plus 1. But, and this is kind of tricky there, but we do have to notice that the term before k plus 1 is actually plus k plus k plus 1. And the term before that would be k minus 1, right? Dot, dot, dot. So we actually already have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 to k before this k plus 1 the term. So the 1 to k part is this assumption. Does that make sense? I hope so. So we have to think about the k plus 1 -th term in the context of like our actual proof, right? The dot 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 part actually matters. So the 1 to k is k times k plus 1 over 2. And we can assume that is true because we did that in part 2. And then we add the next term, which would be the k plus 1. Okay. And then the question is still, does this thing, whatever this thing, this side equals, does that equal to this side? So this equals, we're just going to do a little bit of algebra work with this. Uh, we see that we have a fraction with the denominator of 2. And since this is just on the side here, um, we need to find a common denominator. So we'll put a 2 here, but we'll also multiply the top by 2, so that when we add fractions, we keep the common denominator. So 2. And so we have a k times k plus 1 plus 2 times k plus 1. Right. And so, at this point, we can actually see that we can factor out this k plus 1 and get k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2, which is this. And so we actually already proved it, but we might as well multiply this all out since we already did it on this side. <laughs> but this is just distributing it out. k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2, so this equals k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2, so we already showed that that equals that, okay? So our goal is really to directly show from this side, this 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus dot 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 to k plus 1 equals this k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1 over 2 just straight up applying n equals k plus 1. And from here, I kind of simplified the right side a little bit, and then wrote out the 1 plus 2 up to k to equal my k times k plus 1 over 2, and then added the k plus 1 -th term, simplified that algebraically, and got the same thing. So therefore, this side equals this side, so we proved that our statement is true for n equals k plus 1 based on our assumption that it's true for 
n equals k. So for the first k terms. So whether you want to just jump right here to that simplification or if you have another way to work it out algebraically, I know this might be a little bit cringy for those of you who like to just get right to the point. <laughs> but I'm working it out as though we've never seen this proof before and we've, you know, just never done this before. It's okay to just try it out. So, um, as long as you get there with a bunch of equal statements, you're good to go. Make sure that you write out the actual base case. This needs to be shown and write your assumption as well. Okay, and that's it. So, these two together are usually considered, again, the inductive step and the base step. And then you can just write, therefore, little dots like that, therefore, uh, you know, just basically repeat your proof. Times n plus 1 over 2. Q, E, D. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Anyways, I hope that this was interesting um, and fun. And we can probably do some more sums like this. Maybe I can dig out some Fibonacci sequence ones or something. Um, and hopefully this is like a good little intro. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And of course subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to come along for some math and or ASMR and or just to hang out. And I will see you around. I hope that you're doing very well. Bye!